Hey guys, welcome back to Baking with Shannon. Today we're going to be making a strawberries and cream Swiss roll. Perfect for that springtime occasion when strawberries are at its peak. In the bowl with stand mixer, or you can use a hand mixer for this, you want to add four large eggs at room temperature. It's critical that the eggs are room temperature, that way you can be in more volume and more air into our cake. So to our eggs, you want to add 1 third of a cup or 68 grams of granulated white sugar. I cut the sugar back by about 30% compared to the original recipe, so it still gives it a light and airy texture as well as some sweetness but not being too sweet. So after whipping your sugar and egg mixture for about 5 to 7 minutes on high speed, you should have a pretty light and airy texture on your hands. It should be pale yellow and if you lift your beater up, it should fall back in a gentle ribbon. So now at this point, you want to add 2 teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. You can also substitute with some almond extract, that will be really nice. Or lemon extract, you can add some fresh citrus zest here. Really, you can add whatever flavors you like. So once you've incorporated the vanilla, you want to start sifting in your dry ingredients. So that includes half a cup or 65 grams of all-purpose flour, along with 3 tablespoons or 23 grams of cornstarch, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. So make sure as you're folding those dry ingredients in, you're using either a rubber spatula or a wired whisk to make sure you're getting deep down into the depths of those bowls, where it tends to be a lot of hidden pockets of dry flour that you want to incorporate. Keep in mind as you're folding in those dry ingredients, you don't want to over mix it and deflate the batter after working so hard to incorporate so much air into those eggs. It's really just a fine balance of mixing things just until it's incorporated and not overdoing it. So that's the basis of our sponge cake batter. It really is that simple and easy. So what you want to do now is just pour the batter into a lightly greased jelly roll pan that's about 9 inches by 13 inches or 23 centimeter by 33 centimeter pan that's been lightly greased with some oil as well as lined with a piece of parchment paper. So go ahead and level it out by using either an offset spatula or a butter knife or you can just tap the pan on the countertop for a few times and that also helps to release some of those air bubbles. So then just bake your cake off at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 18 minutes or until it's lightly golden in color and it's dry to the touch. Once the cake is done, go ahead and remove it from the oven and while it's still hot and being very careful not to burn yourself, run a knife around the edges just to loosen it and make sure it's not sticking. The reason why we're doing it now is because we need to roll the cake while it's still fresh and warm. That way it's a little bit more pliable and it's less likely to crack. Before the cake is inverted, make sure to dust the top with a little bit of powdered sugar so that way it prevents it from sticking to the parchment paper. So now just place your piece of parchment paper or you can use a clean tea towel for this and just flip it over in one fell swoop. Once you flip your cake over, go ahead and remove that bottom layer of parchment paper and just repeat the same procedure, dusting a light layer of powdered sugar on top before we start rolling. So now while the cake is still warm and pliable, you want to start rolling. And I like to roll from the shorter end because I like a thicker, stoutier cake, but you can also roll from the longer edge to produce a thinner and longer cake. So once your cake's been rolled, go ahead and place it seam side down on a wired rack to finish cooling completely before frosting. So while our cake is cooling, I'm whipping up some cold, heavy cream along with some powdered sugar to your taste until it reaches stiff peaks. And you know, if you want a healthier spin on this, you can definitely use some Greek yogurt, like non-fat Greek yogurt, mixed with a little bit of honey and a touch of vanilla. That will be equally delicious and it will be a great reason to have cake for breakfast.
Alongside our freshly whipped cream or Greek yogurt, whichever you choose to use, I'm just slicing up some fresh strawberries, which are really at its peak when it's coming into April, springtime here. These California strawberries are just deliciously juicy and sweet. So all there's left to do now is just unroll the cake that's been completely cooled and just add your cream or your yogurt, whichever you're using, add the strawberries, but just kind of be modest because if you add too much, it's going to spill out the sides. But either way, fill your cake up, roll it up, and you're good to go. So for the finishing touches, I like to add a light dusting of powdered sugar on top. Of course, you don't have to add it if you don't want to, but either way, you have a nice light and airy cake that's not too sweet, because again, we did cut back on the sugar by about 30%, and who doesn't love strawberries and cream? Or strawberries and Greek yogurt <laughs> for a healthy twist. So either way, if you give this recipe a try, leave me a comment below telling me what you think. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for new videos every Tuesday. Thank you guys for watching and take care. Bye.